Welcome back to His Fire for Me. I'm Jesse, and this is Kim, and you have made it to another Frugal Friday, where we're reading the book, The Art of Frugal Hedonism, and we're on chapter 20. Chapter Kim? 20! Yeah. That's we're exciting. 20 weeks in. Yeah. All right. What's this week about? This week is titled, Indulge Your Curiosity. Papa has brought home presents from his trip to market. There's a hair ribbon, a piece of slingshot rubber, and a stick of hard candy, which little Alice and Samuel carefully divide. Thrilling acquisitions to be sure, but just as thrilling as Papa's description of the orphaned baby kangaroo that the grocer's wife has taken on the care of. The children rain down questions about how it drinks milk, where it sleeps, how long its tail is, and whether it has any fur yet. The answers are stashed away greedily for future contemplation. Most people love the feeling of getting something new, but forget that it can come as easily from discovery as from consumption. A fascinating fact, a good anecdote, learning how to do something, having an experience you've never had before, hearing some gossip, anything that extends our picture of the universe we're part of. Craving novelty or stimulation? Don't go buy another shirt or scan the papers for a new cafe to try. Instead, learn the name of three plants in your garden and what their Latin names mean. Use the internet to teach yourself a dance move. Read something by a writer you've always meant to get acquainted with. Take a free tour of a public building. Ask an eloquent friend to tell you about their childhood. Look up five uses for sour milk apart from the one listed in tip number five, hate waste, of this book. Go to the library and find out the history of your suburb, street, or maybe even the past residents of your own home. Take a photo of the night sky every night for a fortnight and see how it changes. Draw a picture of your cat using your toes. Indulging your curiosity isn't only a less expensive way of getting that getting feeling, it is deep hedonism. As your understandings amass, you begin to sense the world around you as a dense and majestic cathedral of thrumming interconnected functions and stories. Plus, you can revel wholeheartedly in these riches as you accrue them, knowing that they require no wardrobe space or loan repayments. Knowledge can function in lieu of material goods in other ways too. Your authors would much rather someone showed up for an afternoon tea bearing a piping hot tail of something riveting than clutching a bag of danishes, and we're certain many others feel the same way. Converting your thoughts or discoveries into something tellable not only entertains and enriches your audience, but it clarifies and cements them for you, the teller, too. You're forced to do a little ordering of the information in your head, noting its most crucial and captivating details. You might spot a few missing links that you'd like to fill in or even a revelation you've come to. The whole process is an art well worth cultivating. Indulging your curiosity can be as simple as diving for a dictionary every time you stumble across a word you don't know. Often, however, it drives you further afield into the world of experience. Doing a long distance bike trip, eating a whole habanero chili, experimenting with barefoot running or going to midnight mass, all because you're curious what those things are like. Studies repeatedly indicate that experience delivers more and longer lasting happiness than things do. Chasing experiential curiosity can be expensive and is an area where your authors sometimes ignore frugality. We forked out big bucks to take a hot air balloon trip, do a short course with a world-class expert, or go to mind-blowing theater show. We don't regret a penny of it though, not only because most of what we do to indulge our curiosity is free, but because being curious saves us from the costly compulsion to browse for new purchases as a source of stimulation and novelty. And then there's two little pictures here that we'll show you. It says, we don't have a cat, so here are some pictures we drew of each other with our toes instead. Hmm. Those <laughs> look like they've been drawn with toes. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> or by a two-year-old. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I think this is kind of an interesting topic. I think it kind of uh, plays on an idea that you were recently looking up, not due to this book, but um, talking more about um, play and I forget what was mm. the study called? It was actually just in a mindfulness uh, magazine that I was reading, but it was talking about how important it is to play even as adults and how we think about play a little bit different as adults than we do with kids. Yeah, and I think your curiosity, obviously kids are very curious and mm -hmm. they're constantly, you know, trying to figure out what things do and um, how things work and, and different stuff like that. So um, I, I think this is a great way to kind of keep your mind going and, and maybe find ways to 
Um, maybe spend a little money on some stuff, but um, also find some free things to, you know, bolster your curiosity. Uh, recently, I've picked up um, flow acrylics hmm. and been trying my hand at figuring out what different techniques do to make uh, art in different ways using acrylic paints on canvas. Mm -hmm. And um, yesterday I learned that uh, you do not <laughs> fill up a balloon too big because if you pop a balloon with paint all over it, it flies all over your house. So uh, we got to clean up some paint <laughs> from our house after the balloon popped. But um, what are some things that um, you, Kim, have done to um, kind of bolster your curiosity? Well, interestingly, today I found this little thing that kind of looked like a little mouse poop, but I could tell that it was a shell with something inside. So it kind of looked like maybe like a, a moth chrysalis or I'm not sure if that's the right word, but whatever the things are that moths kind of mature in, but it was really, really small. And so I found it in the laundry room and instead of just like sweeping it up and sending it away, I left it on the counter and I watched it. Um, as I was doing laundry and a little fly came out of it and it like cracked the end of it open and then the little fly crawled out and then it just kind of sat on the thing for a while like it was just trying to figure out how to live life and then it like kind of got its wings and got its bearings and then it flew away which was <laughs> really fascinating so I thought that was interesting and it prompted me to kind of look up like the fly reproductive cycle and what I had just seen. And one of my friends did something similar with um, some aphids that she found on her um, plant, one of her indoor plants, and she was picking the aphids off and felt like she needed to learn a little bit more about aphids. And so she shared all of her knowledge with me that she had learned about aphids and especially their reproductive cycle, which was really interesting. Hmm. Um, and then another thing that comes to mind is a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to do just a little local trip. And so I was able to go to a few places locally um, and spend a few nights there. And I really felt like I was able to indulge my curiosity that way because I was someplace different each time. I had to navigate to each spot and then explore the area that I was in and find different parks that I wanted to go to and kind of coordinate like what my itinerary would look like. And that felt like something that really kind of engaged my curiosity and, and was a little bit of novelty as well. Great. Yeah. I like the aphid story because I think a lot of people would just get very frustrated or discouraged <laughs> that they had to deal with this pest on their plant. And um, yeah, and while that can still be frustrating, I'm sure, but you could also take that as an opportunity of understanding why would an aphid go to your plant mm -hmm. and what are they looking for from your plant and you know what makes an aphid do what an aphid does and so um, it's a very interesting strategy she used to use that opportunity to you know grow her, her knowledge and mm -hmm. um, so yeah so what are some things that maybe you have done in the past um, our audience leave those down in the comments below um, of stuff that has drawn you into uh, bolster your curiosity about a certain subject that you've just gone off a tangent on. So mm -hmm. um, I know Kim loves to, uh, whenever we're watching a movie and she sees an actor or actress in that movie, <laughs> she has to know what else they've played in and where she's seen them before. Um, so I miss the movie theaters because she can't do that in the theater. <laughs> she has to sit and watch the movie and look it up afterwards. But if we're sitting at home on the couch, you can bet she's got her phone out looking up all the movies that they've mm -hmm. been in. So. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd love to hear what you do um, for your household. And um, yeah, anything else for us? No, we hope you have a good weekend and we'll see you back here next week. And thanks for watching.